experiment involves flammable materials and smoke. This should be done outside or in a fume hood with basic fire safety rules. Greetings, fellow nerds. Let's do some really basic chemistry again. I have here some steel wool. It doesn't look like it, but it's actually quite reactive with air. To see this, first fluff it up a bit to give it more air between the voids. Now simply set on fire. As you can see, you get this nice light show of burning iron. What's happening is the iron is reacting with the air to form iron oxide. This happens with almost all iron, but steel wool is more spectacular because the small strands and high surface area let it heat up to the point that the reaction is self-sustaining and burns through the wool. Let's try that again. Be careful when doing this as the wool will throw off sparks that might set nearby things on fire. You have to fluff it up a bit because if you use compacted steel wool, the air can't get in and oxidize the iron. Now I'm going to go a step further and use the potassium chlorate we made from bleach in a previous video. Mixing equal masses of iron to potassium chlorate will produce a very vigorous reaction since we're providing oxygen directly in a more concentrated form. And that was burning steel wool. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. No, don't, want to, don't want to play all of it, even though it's a short video. Don't want to steal, well, steal still. his show. Steal his, uh, steal his glory. Oh, well, yeah. But one thing that's interesting, when I watch this video, one thing that's interesting is that when you actually watch, as what he would say, the steel wall burn, mm. you kind of see glows of well, it's, glow, it's glowing now, isn't it? When you let's just uh, let's just replay. It's like as soon as the yeah, it's like this bit here. It's glowing very bright white. Yeah, isn't very it? bright white. As it can't, yeah, it's hard to describe it really. So, yeah, it's, well, it's not hard to describe. They all, they all look like little white, bright bits of light. The heat is very intense. intense. Yeah, the heat. Yeah, the heat is very intense in places, and then it yeah. dies. Well, yeah, and then it could, dies. Yeah, I wonder what could cause that. Well, um, well, I, I think if somebody asked, well, if somebody asked me what caused this, the the white, well, not this bit here, but. This the white glowingness of these strands yeah, yeah, of yeah. steel wool. I would say it's oxygen. Yeah, I would. That's too. actually contained in the steel wool. Oh, yeah. But these people, like nerd rage, would say it's the oxygen in the air. No, I, no. I think the steel wool contains the oxygen. Oh right, yeah. I wonder how we're going to find out. Because the air, air would just support combustion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. air would just support congest yeah. combustion. But to make it glow. Brighter, you'd need oxygen. Well, it's like when he used that potassium chlorate. Absolutely, when he potassium used potassium chlorate, contains yeah. a lot of oxygen. oxygen. Absolutely. So, so here we see him smothering it in with potassium chlorate. So it's not surprising. It's unsurprising. White glows White a glows. lot. <laughs> Look at that, because the amount of oxygen that's present within the potassium chlorate, as well as the steel, steel wool. wool. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But there's no oxygen in the air. There's no oxygen in the air because there isn't. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Absolutely. A lot of people don't like hearing your view, hearing people's views and, and opinions, especially if they're right and you're wrong. No, you're right. And or you're wrong. right and they're wrong. Absolutely. Because you can't be both right. Or you're, say, right. or you're saying to somebody that they're wrong. Oh, right, yeah. Absolutely, but of course. But it depends what they want to tell you. Well, it depends whether they're right or wrong, doesn't it? Oh, right, yeah. Really, because if they're right, then they haven't got a problem. But if they're wrong, then they... I don't know what it is with people. People don't seem to want to admit when they're wrong. Oh, yeah, but that's... Do you know what that is? 
I don't know why, it's because they don't want to realise that they've got a problem. Oh yeah, they don't want to realise they've got personal problems, problems personal because, issues. Because we have to realise that when we go out and walk out in our daily, everyday walk of life, you're walking around with people who have problems. Who have problems, absolutely. And a lot of people recognise those problems, whereas, a lot of, whereas there's lots of other people who don't. Absolutely, of course, yes, of course. It's so nice to actually have that understanding that the people who you uh, work with, members of your family, uh, the people who you socialise with, mm. a lot of them have got problems. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but one th the thing is, is that people who recognise that they have problems yeah, yeah. are a lot happier. Yeah, I mean, I've got my own personal problems. You know, so I've, have I. I've got to admit that because I have. I'm not going, going to deny that. But I have to admit, I'm genuinely open about my life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I feel so, I do feel freer. Absolutely. Whereas the people who, who think that they don't have a problem, and they're, it's, and it's they're, people, they're kind of trapped yeah, within themselves, themselves aren't they? Yeah. They can't really enjoy life. Yeah. People like that can't really enjoy yeah. life. Yeah. And the thing I find, and that is if you're not enjoying your life, it's not worth living at all, is it? Absolutely. Absolutely, of course. So there's a moral in the story there. Always enjoy, enjoy your, your life. life. Absolutely. Otherwise it's not worth living. Absolutely. Of course. Yes. Absolutely. So let's... Get on, and what have we got on for everyone's displeasure oh, for tonight, well, Peter? For, well, for everyone's displeasure, we've got a great video for everyone tonight. We're going to have a look at the reducing agent, or the source of hydrogen in cadmium and indium. Yeah, we're going to follow on our idea yeah, that hydrogen to, is the is, is the, the key is, thing that uh, in, with the key could, thing that you needed to produce a metal. To, absolutely. Yeah. Because metals, all metals contain hydrogen. hydrogen. That's our understanding, of course. Now we're going to, we're going to revisit uh, Lavoisier. Ah, Monsieur, Monsieur Lavoisier, Lavoisier, we have it in for you. Yeah, absolutely. Monsieur Lavoisier, you are the person who developed your oxygen theory oh, and right. brittle rubbish, Ish. Monsieur. Yeah, because when we put forward our view that there's uh, of collagenation hmm. and that so much of the air is absorbed into the material when they're heated, yeah. Some people might think, well, what happens to the remaining air then? Oh, of course, yeah. So I thought we'd look at that. Oh, there you go, we have the remaining air. We have some iota who's... Uh, some iota who's... who's challenged one, of our, one of our followers. I'm yes. I think she's a subscriber, I don't know. But she's that, she's contacted us to let so us know that she's got a song. That she's so got, got a song, so we thought we'd have a little do a promotion part, part in the video. For her. Absolutely. And we're going to have a look at this. We're going to have a raid. A raid on radon. On radon. Raid on radon. Ah. Yeah, so bring your air, your air raid shelters, your helmets. Absolutely, of yeah. course, yeah, of course. Yeah. And you can all pretend to be, well, the, for the male members, you can always prepare, pretend to be Bill Pertwee, can't Bill you? Bill Pertwee, absolutely, yeah. of course. And if nobody knows who Bill Pertwee is, or was he was the warden on Dad's army? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Of course, let's go. What was the point of mentioning that anyway? Oh, and we've got some. Uh, we've did. We've done a little little we've, demonstration with some steel wool, which will link in with our video that we introduced with uh, at the beginning with, with Nerd Rage. Absolutely, because he seems to think it's the oxygen in the air that's reacting with the steel wool. Well, so the oxidor is this thing called oxidation. Yeah. Oxidation. Yeah, anyway, Oxidation. Come on. <laughs> Oxidation. That's what you need. If you want to oxidize. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Oxidation's what you need. If you want to be an oxidizer. Yeah. I quite like that, actually. Absolutely, of course. But So, so let's get on first. And on, we'll do. Very quickly. Very quickly. Let's go on and have a little this look. Oh, I was going to have a little look at oh, some right. iota. Here you go, here's some iota. Uh, a little lament about the media, the deceived and the earth. earth yeah. Absolutely. There's so many of them. Mm. Um, so here, let's have a little listen to this. Not long, but let's have a little listen. Deceived faces. 
There we go. We're not going to play all of it, but thank you ever so much, Summer Ota. Uh, we just thought we'd promote the, promote her song. If anyone wants to go on the channel and leave a comment or listen to the whole song, uh, she's even put the uh, the, the lyrics down there. there we'll right. have a little look, and um, there you go. She's yeah. very interested in uh, oh, what's it called? Um, natural kind of living, living naturally off the land, living independently of society, and you know. Doing off grid yeah, yeah. kind of stuff. stuff. Right, yeah. So, I mean, if anyone's in interested, you know, feel free to uh, contact her, drop a, line. Drop a yeah. line, get involved. Yeah, so thanks very much. Yeah, Some thanks very much, Sam Iota. Yeah, absolutely, of course. So, there's that. And what next? Should we do. Uh, Lavoisier, come on. Lavoisier, here we go. Come now, on. we've got this video here the discovery of oxygen <laughs> and combustion. 1946, educational film or indoctrinal. Indoctri indoctrinational film. film. Oh, right, well, yeah. Absolutely, of course. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll play this and then we'll we'll stop it and then we'll have a little chat about it. Okay? Because yep. all we're going to demonstrate, or sorry, all we're, we're going to show to people is what Lavoisier did many, many years ago. Many, many years to ago. To determine what, to, to, to help him come to the conclusion mm -hmm. in his mind. The false conclusion. That there's 20%... 21% oxygen, oxygen in, in the, the air. air. As it, so let's have a little listen to this. Are you ready? Yes. Priestley's discovery gave him the clue. Lavoisier proceeded to experiment with mercury and finally demonstrated his new theory. He poured exactly four ounces of mercury into a long-necked flask or retort. He placed the retort in position, isolating the neck in air confined in a bell jar. The liquid level was adjusted so as to leave exactly 50 cubic inches of air. A marker was stuck in position. Atmospheric temperature and pressure were noted. Then the furnace was lighted. For a whole day, there was no change in the retort. But on the second day, there had appeared on the surface of the mercury a few red spots. As the days passed, they grew in size and number until the whole surface was covered. In the bell jar, the liquid, which had been forced down by expanded air, had now risen. Gas was disappearing. Heating was continued for a further seven days to ensure that the action was complete, and then the apparatus was left to cool. By measurement and calculation, Lavoisier found that eight cubic inches of gas, weighing some three and a half grains, had disappeared. Yeah, that's all you need to... Right, so there's an amount of, well, what he would call gas that had disappeared. Um, yeah, there's a reduction in the yeah. air space, but he's not actually determining whether that, that what the amount that's disappeared is a separate from the amount that was remaining. Well, he came to the conclusion that the air that had been absorbed into the mercury or reacted with mercury was of a different kind or separate mm. to the remaining air yeah because if you just move it forward a bit when they when he tests the remaining air here oh here yeah here yeah he there doesn't test it here does he yes he does does no yes. he doesn't this yes, is he the, does. oh this is the remaining air yeah the remaining Sorry. air that's left in the 
Bell jar. Bell jar, yeah. Okay, let's have a listen to this. Oh, yeah. Well, what about the air in the retool? What about the air there in the retool? There would have been the air in the retool. Anyway, come on. Sure. Yeah, sure. Anyway, let's listen to this. Tests on the remaining gas showed that it had lost its active part and would no longer support combustion or life. Now, now a lot of people would say who support the, it, the oxygen theory, Lavoisier's oxygen theory, theory, would say that that's nitrogen. Yeah, a lot of people would say that's nitrogen. Now, in our understanding of calogenation, the mercury would have yeah. absorbed so much of the air. But don't, yeah, only so much, much of the only air. Only so much of the air. Because it, its surface area was exposed... It's, it had a limited surface area that was well, exposed it's all, to It's the, all relative, isn't it? It's all relative, yeah. It's all proportional, proportional to yeah. the size of the flask, the amount of air in it, the amount of air in it, and the amount of mercury, mercury that was exposed to the air, yeah. had contact with the air. Yeah. So that air was absorbed into the mercury, so yeah, much sure. air was absorbed, absorbed into, into the mercury. mercury. But my understanding is that the remaining air just became stale. Just became stale. Became became nitrogenous, nitrogenous. as a result of being, being trapped. As a, a result of being trapped, trapped. and and um, because of the heat. Yeah, basically. Now, that's a good point. How do we know? How did Lavoisier know that through that demonstration, okay, nitrogen is a constituent of the yeah. air? Yeah, I know. Yeah. When it could have been the process. Mm. The heating up of the mercury, okay, and that continual heat, remember it was for seven days. Seven days. Mm. Continual heat could have turned the air into a nitrogenous yeah. air. Yeah, because ni nitrogen is very much related to staleness. Staleness, yeah, because nitrogen, as uh, I think Daniel Rutherford was the person who knocked, was it noxious air? Yeah, yeah noxious air. Daniel Rutherford. Yeah. And uh, Cavendish, I think Cavendish called it burnt air. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been. I think it was, yeah, I'm sure. But they used to find uh, nitrates in uh, cellars, cellars in basements. In basements. Stale. Where, where, Stale. where there wasn't much movement, movement of air, yeah. where the air wasn't where where the air wasn't replenished through ventilation, Ventilations, for yeah. example. So, you know, we're obviously going to see that, you know, it's how did Lavoisier could not have come to the conclusion that oxygen is a all nitrogen is a consti are oh, constituents, constituents of air simply based on that demonstration, Sorry. because the process itself could have turned the air nitrogenous, and the actual calogenation of the mercury to produce mercuric oxide and the subsequent cooling hmm. after seven days of heat, yeah. according to this information, could have produced oxygen. oxygen yeah could attract the air contracted to produce oxygen, oxygen. There upon go. cooling there you go that's that done if you guys think we're wrong yeah we'd love to sh you to show us how that demonstration proves oxygen and nitrogen, nitrogen. are constituents yeah. of the air prior to him heating up the mercury yeah there we go click off then right okay yeah, yeah that was in it that was quite uh, quite straightforward wasn't it Seems to be whacking oh, well, this yeah. out, you oh, know. Well, yeah. That's because once you reach a certain understanding, yeah. nobody can disprove your claim. Okay. Right, OK, let's have a look at uh, our steel wall. Yeah, let's have... Well, this, this is interesting. Yeah, now this bit is very interesting. Um, now, we watched Nerd Rage at the beginning, OK, burn steel wall. Now, as far as we're concerned, OK, as, we've, as we mentioned earlier, when steel wool burns, it glows in most parts white. There's a white mm. glow to it. Well, okay. Well, there is. Well, on the video, it's more bright yellow. Isn't well, it? this is. Well, it's white. Yeah. It's bright, bright, yeah, bright, yeah, bright, yeah. bright yellow, as opposed to a deep red, for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which obviously um, indicates there's an awful lot of heat. Yes. Mm. Now, as far as we're well, you concerned, you can see there. You can tell where it's hotter it's hotter than other parts other parts mm. now we consider that the um steel wall isn't being oxidized no there's no oxygen by the air yeah there's because no there's no oxygen in there nobody can prove that to mm. you so it's our understanding because it does appear as if there is oxygen present mm. So our understanding is the oxygen has to be a constituent of the steel, steel. wool. Mm. 
during its manufacturing process. During its manufacturing process. Yeah. Do we need to go online? We can so, do. So, yeah, let's we can go it. still rolling mill. Still rolling. Well, is it still, still manufacturing? manufacturing? Oh, we could watch a video, couldn't we? Well, we could watch a video on steel wool. We could watch a video on... You should have gone on YouTube. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Well, wait there. Let's... let's. Oh, let's do this properly. Okay, sorry about Come on, this. Come on, hurry up. Let's go, up let's go up and have a little look. Steel wool manu manufacture. Manufacture process. Here we go. Let's watch a little video. Let's hope it's not uh, steel wool, how it's made, but it might be... Uh, What's that? They may have already shown you how they may. They may have already. They may. It. They may only start from the process of after the steel's made. Oh right, yeah, yeah. That's the trouble. But if you look up steel, let's look up steel manufacturing. I think that would be the best thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's quite clear that when you watch this kind of material, okay, look. You know. We've got to remember there's an awful lot of heat, heat. in the manufacture of steel, which yeah. then goes on to produce steel wool. And they actually do use uh, oxygen in the furnace. They use oxygen in the blast furnace. furnace. And okay. we also have to remember that as the steel ingots... There you go. Yeah. So wait there, there's a Ghana. Yeah, He's just I'll, moving I'll, forward. I'm, I'm trying to watch... Oh, there you go. Look, there's. I'm watching some, some heat in the furnace because that's all... There isn't much about the... There's, oh, there you go. Look, we can go back. There's an awful lot of... These... All of this is exposed to air. Air, yeah. And they're glowing. They're collagenating. Yeah. Which means they're absorbing the, the air that's... The surrounding air they're being passed in, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, where, where, have where you got on? a video? Have you got a section where they're, they're rolling? Oh, yeah. That's over here, isn't it? Yeah, wait there. They're pouring it out there, and I'm oh, sure. Yeah, there. there. Just before there. Yeah, it's all. Yeah. It's all in. There you go. You can see it being uh, the liquid metal, hot metal, is coming down, and they're basically rolling them out. Yeah. But all the while, these. Are, so you've got them here. Yeah. Look at that. They're they're hot, and there's all air around them. Yeah. And they're glowing. Yeah. They're glowing red, and sometimes even whitish. Yeah. Because of the heat. And because which the, means they're collagenating, yeah. So they're absorbing the air. So in our understanding, when it when the steel, remember, yeah, yeah because they're red, they're expanded. Really? The air's being absorbed, absorbed into the material because there's a void inside, and then upon cooling, they'll contract That's and lock in the air to produce oxygen, oxygen to be oxygenated. oxygenated, and that's where, in our opinion, steel gets its oxygen from. Oh. Mm. So when we do look at nerd rage, when we do look at nerd rage and his uh, video uh, still burning still wool, we can certainly understand why you get in the whitish uh, whitish glow, mm. uh, which indicates the presence of oxygen, oxygen. Yeah. because it's the oxygen burning. Mm. Or sorry, not no. the oxygen burning, no. sorry. It's the oxygen the com that's convenient to support or the heat, heat, to intensify fire. the heat of the combustion yep. of the wall. That's that's the sorry, that's what I should have said. Oxygen doesn't burn. I mm. do apologise. Ow. There we go. Come on. So I think that's quite quite good. Now, going on that uh, understanding. understanding, okay, what we did is we thought we'd try and kind of put that to the test yeah. in certain respects. And we did a demonstration. We, well, we've done a demonstration because we want to know what difference would it make if you actually burned a piece of steel wool? Well, if if we're right in saying that ox that steel wool contains oxygen, what would happen? There would be a noticeable difference between the corrosion of steel, the rate of corrosion right. of steel wool. Um, in one, in two instances, one where the steel wall has been left untouched, and the other instance when the steel wall has been combusted. Mm. Well, there would be, there would be, because think if you think of like this, in our understanding, oxygen preserves materials, doesn't oh. it? Oxygen preserves materials. So if Absolutely. you've got some wire wall, and the oxygen has been released because we've burnt the wire wall to release the oxygen, then in theory, that should corrode 
much quicker, quicker. Absolutely. than the other one. Than the other one. So, yeah, that's basically the understanding. So what we've got here is we've got uh, we've got uh, two pieces of wire wool. The only problem scales. With, the only problem with that understanding is that we added vinegar to the water. Oh, sure. And that may have um, that may um, affect affect because it's the vinegar, yeah, but they both have got have been been exposed to it. Right. Okay. 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 So we've got a jug of water there, and we're adding some acetic acid to the just a drop. just a drop. Yep. Okay, oh. there you go to the uh, water. Okay, so the, we've only added the acetic acid to speed up the rate of decomposition of the steel wool. Mm. Uh, otherwise, we've been waiting there for yeah, come quite, on, a few, moving forward. quite a few weeks. Even. So we've done that. Okay, we give stirred it, stir. it, give it a come stir, on. and what we're going to do? We've got two pieces of wire wool. And we're going to weigh them just to show everyone that they are of the same weight. Yeah. Okay. Wait yeah, there. So there's there there's one piece of steel wool. Four point four five. Four point four five. There we go. So we've got that one. Yeah. Go. Pop that off. Pop it on the. Uh, pop it on a paper towel. Next and one. we're going to do the same one. And we've got oh, four point four five. Look at that! Oh, look at that. Oh, didn't, clever. Didn't you do a wonderful job yeah. in getting these exactly the same, same weight. weights? So we've got them like that, like so. So that's good. Our next thing is uh, what do we do? Let's pick that up. So we've got some tweezers. So the next thing we do is we burn mm. or combust one piece of wire wool. Wire wool. Mm. Okay. To release the oxygen. To release the oxygen, oxygen. of course. Because we've got to remember, when one combusts steel wool, it gains in weight. Right. yeah. So, wait there, I think we're looking for something to... Oh, I suppose the plate was good. because So, there's our steel wool. Got it in the tweezers. And we've got... Oh, well, we could, have, we could have weighed the plate and then burnt the steel wool over the plate. No, I don't think it matters because we actually weighed this and it was more. Oh, right, well, yeah. Because the thing I find is a bit odd, and that is you, you see all these little bits dropping off mm. the wire wall. Anyone would think that the wire wall would lose weight. Wait, yeah, I know, yeah. But it doesn't. It actually gains, gains weight. weight, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's because it breaks down inside. Yeah. So that they... Because when it's together, it's more compact. Sure. Absolutely. One thing I do know, and that is, it cools down very quickly. Mm. It cools down and very also quickly. One thing you, we've got to notice about it, and that is, it t some places it turns black. It turns black because that's the carbon, carbon content. Yeah. But uh, actually, coming f f uh, to the surface, surface yeah. of the material. So we'll wait for the glowing to extinguish, and we've got there it we out there. Okay. So we weigh this again just to show everyone that the steel wall has gained in weight. It was 0.45, wasn't it? 4.45, was it not? And it's 4.56, yes, 4.57. So it has gained in weight, okay. So mm. we can say that it has been combusted, Yeah, obviously. So what we do is we dip it in the... Uh, we dip it in the... Dip in, in the vinegar. In the vinegar. Come on. Okay, there we go. We dip it that in yeah, the vinegar. Give it a wash. Give it a little wash over and then pop it on the paper towel. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Leave that on there. And do the same with the other Another piece one. of steel wool. Um, go and move forward. There Come we go. On. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to... There's not much left of it anyway. Do the same to the other piece of steel wool. Okay. So they've both been exposed to the same amount of vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what we did is that we popped them dry a bit. Absolutely, yeah. What we've done is we popped them on two little paper plates. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave them and we're going to compare the amount, the, the rate of corrosion, the rate of rusting. Well, you don't need to look to at each. You don't need to look at the rate of rusting. You only need to compare the amount of rust that's occurred on each one. On each one, yeah. And see if there's a difference. And see if there's a difference. Because what we should expect to find is the one that's had the oxygen removed should rust quicker, quicker. Yeah. than the one... Because the wire wall, the iron, is more exposed, exposed to, to be able to come... To decompose. To decompose, because oxygen 
prevents things from decomposition. Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah. It strengthens materials. Tools, yeah. It makes things stronger. stronger. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. So that would be a very interesting, um, uh, you know, thing to uh, see what happens over the next few the weeks. weeks yeah. You know, so well, you know, I'm sure in the next few days, really. In the next few days, it'd be just Doesn't interesting. Take long. Won't take long. Won't take long. Absolutely. So that's that. That was uh, that's that. There you go. There you go. Marvelous. Marvelous. Well, we're now. Oh, we've got now to do the t- cadmium. Cadmium. Right. Okay. Cadmium let's do some indium. Let's do some cadmium and just indium. Time. Um, oh, sure. Right, yeah. yeah, I think we've done. Yeah. Only halfway through. Yeah, nearly. Yeah. Come on. So cadmium. cadmium here we go. So what? You know, now it's our understanding that hydrogen is um, all is present in all reducing yeah. agents, and it's the hydrogen that enables the metal to become a metal. Oh, it's one of the things. But you know, hydrogen. Because oh, well, yeah. I'm sure there could well be other things that. Well, the hydrogen. But you need the metal. The yeah, hi- sorry, you need hydrogen. hydrogen. Yeah. The hydrogen is within the reducing agent, and the reducing agent is within the metal. It's always within in the, the metal. metal. So we, we've done gold. We've done gold with cyanide, cyanide, cyanide. The cyanide. Yeah. We've got iron. Because, got, because of the carbon. Because of the carbon. We've content. got tin because of carbothermal reduction. Oh, because when the carbon heats up, it will it will allegedly release well carbon monoxide carbon monoxide mm. i'm sure but then there's hydrogen within the carbon monoxide no, absolutely absolutely of course and uh, we're, we're now on cadmium oh i was going to say also about we've done aluminium because yeah. aluminium in the whole herald process you've got carbon electrodes right. and then you've got the uh, carbon in the uh, the kastner kellner kastner kellner in the process in the mercury mercury, mercury. Mercury cathode cell. Cathode cell, that's the one. Well, we're clever. Absolutely, of course. So, so we thought we'd, we'd uh, have a look at cadmium. So cadmium is a chemical element with the symbol CD and atomic number 48. This soft, silvery white metal is chemically similar to the two other stable metals in group 12, zinc, zinc and mercury. mercury. Oh, I wonder how it's made. Oh, yeah. Like zinc, it demonstrates oxidation state. Do you it's in most of its compounds? Do you reckon it's made from any zinc Ores, zinc ores. What well, is possible? Mm. Oh right, yeah. Oh, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. And like, and like mercury. On, yeah, you don't need to read it all. Come on. It has has a lower melting point than the transition metals in group three, 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 three mm. to eleven. Oh that's right. Good. Oh, do you reckon it's got something to do with the, that's got another mercury? Oh, possibly. Yeah, of course. Mer- anyway, with mercury. So let's have a little little look at the. You production. might find. You might find whenever mercury is involved with the metallurgy, metal making. Metal making. You'll find that a substance has a low melting point. Has me- low melting point. point because the mercury affects the characteristic of mercury liquid metal. Basically, uh, gets passed on to the product. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes yeah. sense to me. Absolutely. So let's have a little look at the production. Um, China was the top producer yeah. of com- cadmium. Blah blah blah. Cadmium is common is a common impurity in zinc ores. There you oh. go. So it's unsurprising why cadmium is in the family of zinc or is close yeah. really closely related yeah. to zinc. Yeah. You know. Anyway, and it is most often isolated during the production oh, of I've zinc. I've seen it all. I've seen. I've seen the. I've seen the. Uh, Have you seen reducing all? agent oh, okay. already? Some zinc ores concentrates from sulfidic zinc ores contain up to 1.4% of cadmium. Mm-hmm. In the 1970s, the output of cadmium was 6.5 pounds per tonne of zinc. Zinc sulphide ores are roasted in the presence of oxygen, mm. converting to zinc sulphide to the oxide. Mm. Zinc metal is produced either by smelting the oxide with carbon, carbon. well, what do you, you know? know? There you go. Or by electrolysis Col- in sulfuric acid. acid. And I bet with the electrolysis, they, they, might, use, use they, car- they might use carbon, carbon electrodes. Mmm. Absolutely. Mmm. Absolutely, of course. Carbon is isolated from the zinc metal by vacuum distillation if the zinc is smelted or cadmium sulfate is precipitated from the electrolysis solution. Yeah. So it, it could well be likely that what they could use is, um, because they might use a, they might even use a uh, mercury cathode cell so, possibly, in order yeah. to do it. Yeah. And, that, you know, you've got graphite electrodes yeah. Yeah. in there. So, so you, you can clearly tell how they make these metals. Is, is that They're all in, no, not they're all, but they're, they're very closely related. Sure, they're all. It's because 
it's the manufact them metals are not elements metals in our opinion mm. okay, are products are products they're products of man's um, activity yes. and they do not occur naturally sure. there we go if you if anyone thinks we're wrong show us a naturally occurring metal absolutely it's, you know right. show right. us a piece of metal that occurs naturally. naturally. Oh, someone might say a bit of gold. But how do you got to show that it's You've got to show that it's occur occurring. naturally occurring. Yeah. You know. no one's, Absolutely. No one's we, we'd like to be shown they're naturally occurring. We yeah. don't want a piece of, kind of le, uh, 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 you know, a link to a page yeah. or anything on an article. You know, that's no. rubbish. Indium, come on. Indium. Indium. Okay. The trouble is, we need to find another one that doesn't have carbon. Okay, it's sure. It's got something else. You know. Right, okay. Indium is Indium. a chemical element with the symbol IN and atomic number 49. Indium is the softest metal that is not an alkali metal. Oh, do you reckon there's... Uh, I wonder if there's... Um, uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Hold it on. is a silvery white metal that resembles tin in appearance. Yes. Mm. It is a post-transition metal that makes up uh, 0.21 parts per million of the Earth's crust. Indium has a melting point higher than sodium and gallium, but lower than lithium. Now, and tin. I'm, now I'm beginning to think because I know sodium. These the alkali, the al is it alkali or alkaline earth metals? You can actually um, cut them with a knife, like yeah, sodium, potassium, potassium, lithium. So I'm, I'm wondering because indium is the softest metal that yeah. is not an alkali metal. I'm just wondering whether there's sodium or lithium so, or Something in it. that's soft that's in it. used to, to make, make it. it. Absolutely, of course. Well, let's have a little look then. And see what it's see what it's made. Here we go. Well, it's produced. A current production. production and availability. Here we, Here we go. Now, indium is produced exclusively as a byproduct during the processing of the ores of other metals. Mm. Its main source materials are sulfidic zinc, zinc ores, ores. Oh. just like the uh, cadmium. Yeah, um, where it is mostly hosted by sphalerite. We've come across sphalerite, yeah, yeah, haven't we, yeah. before? Minor amounts are probably also extracted from sulfidic Sulfid copper ores. ores. During the roast leach electro winning process of zinc smelting, um, indium accumulates in the iron rich residues. From these, it can be extracted in different ways. It may also be recovered directly from the processed solutions. Further pur purification is done by electrolysis. Process. The exact process varies with the mode of operation of the smelter. Not really telling you how much how it's made though, is it? No, not really telling you how it's made. But uh let where would no. we find the bit where there's a No, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell that's you. That's all it? it tells you on the Well that's not very good, is it? Yeah. That's very good. Not that's not very good. Who how did they discover it then? Let's have a little look at the discovery. Oh here we go. Occurrence. History. History. Here we go. In eighteen sixty three the German chemist Ferdinand Wick and Hieronymus Theodor Richter the testing odds from the mines around Freiburg, Saxony. They discovered the minerals pyrite, arsenopyrite, galena and sphalerite in hydrochloric acid and distilled raw zinc chloride. Reich, who was colour blind, employed Richter as an assistant for detecting the coloured spectral lines. Knowing that ores from that region sometimes contain thallium, they searched for the green thallium emission spectrum lines. Instead, they found a bright blue line. Because that bright blue line did not match any known element, they hypothesized. Oh, uh, yeah. That, well, hold well what could explain it? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, just quickly read it because, again, even, a new element was present in the minerals. They named the element indium from the indigo colors in the spectrum. Blah, 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 blah. But they're not telling you how they made it. How they made it? How? Yeah, they're not telling you how they made it in the history. How did yeah. they? Did, how did they find it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, okay. does it? We'll have to leave India. Well, we'll have to leave India. But That's can... got a question mark by it. Yeah, really, because the information should be there as to how they found it and what processes they used. It's no good saying it's that it's used in within the electrolysis, but electrolysis of what? Absolutely, of course. Oh yeah, because this this is the thing. This is the thing. Can we don't want to spend no, too you're long. sure. Yeah, but we've got to mention this, and that is oh. Reich, who is colourblind, employed Richter as an assistant for detecting the coloured spectral lines. So, in other words, basically, what they're saying is, is that they they made something, and they did the spectroscopy on it, yeah. and they found it had a line. So they had, and they reached a hypothesis. They hypothesised a new element was present in the minerals. They had an idea. 
But oh, what well, did they do to test that it? idea? I don't know. You tell us. You tell us. You tell us. You will. You will. Tell, tell us. Talk, tell yeah, us. You will. You will talk to us. You will talk. Come on. Absolutely, of course. But this is the whole point. Was it a new element, or basically did they just hypothesise? They come up with the idea mm. that it was a new element, mm. but it wasn't really. Yeah, of course. So, so we can't do anything there. We can't do anything there. So the the jury is out. I'm afraid on that one. But what what, <coughs> what we'll have to do is do a bit, a little bit more do a research. Bit more research. But I'm sure because it's soft, it's got to. Where does it get the quality of softness from? Sure. It's got to get the quality of softness from somewhere. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, but uh, it may also be recovered directly from the process solution. solution. Further purification done by electrolysis. And it could be that they use carbon, carbon, carbon electrodes. Carbon electrodes. Carbon electrodes. Yeah. Anyway, so there well, you go. In our understanding, they would have to. Absolutely, yeah, of course. So uh, let's have a look. If anyone's watching and wants to do a bit of research to find yeah, out. You can Google... Um, Carbon electrodes, electrolysis, electrolysis indium. indium, electrolysis, indium, yeah. absolutely, of course. But uh, that's clear it. off, clear it off. There we go. So that's off, clear it off. That's off. And are we on our? We're on our main. So we don't need a reducing agent no. at all. Well, because no. carbon's on there anyway. Carbon's on there. Anyway. So we'll, that's we'll it, have to it? we'll have to find a, a metal that doesn't have a reducing agent that has another reducing agent sure. other than carbon. Yeah, we've we've done all that. Right. So we're right. now on our. Uh, radon, radon, dum 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 dum. dum. Get in your bunks. Yeah, get in your bunkers. I'm afraid because it's a raid on. We're radon. having a raid on radon. radon. Yeah, because a couple of people have, have asked us about radon. No, San, Sandy one two three asked us. Oh, a long time ago. A long time ago. Sandy one two three and um, Harmon Walker. Yeah. He asked us to have a little look at radon. radon. On radon. And we thought we would actually have a little ra radon. 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 Yeah. Absolutely, of course. So there's uh, image. So we've got radon. Here we go. On the wiki page. Uh, radon is... Do you want to do this? Yeah, radon is a chemical element with the symbol RN and atomic number 86. Sounds like a bus, doesn't it? Yeah. It is a radioactive, colourless, odourless, tasteless, noble gas. Now, straight away, I've got to stop you there and say, it is our understanding that radioactivity doesn't occur naturally it is in our opinion it is a uh, result of man's activity a result of human activity a result of human activity in nature hmm. of course it occurs naturally <coughs> in minute quantities as an intermediate step in the normal radioactive decay chains through which thorium and uranium slowly decay into lead and various other short-lived radioactive elements radon itself is the immediate decay product of radium Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we don't need to. Let's we go don't. and have a look at how it's well, how, how, it, how when it was discovered. When it was discovered, absolutely. History and itemology. Here we go. Radon was the fifth radioactive element to be discovered. Mm. Wow. In 1899 by Ernest Rutherford and Robert B. Owen. Owen. Now we've got to remember oh, that Bobby. Ernest Rutherford, okay, was very much used to play around. Especially with uh, Cockcroft and Walter, oh well, yeah, with high voltages. With high voltages, mm. we've got to remember this. Yeah. This is what they, this is what Ernest Rutherford was doing. Yeah, okay. he was basically bombarding materials with high voltages. Voltage. Yeah, basically, yeah. zapping them. Mm. Uh, anyway, um, at McGill University in Montreal, after uranium, thorium, radium, and polonium. In 1899, Pierre and Marie Curie observed that the gas emitted by radium remained radioactive for a month. Later that year, Rutherford and Owens noticed variations when trying to measure radiation from thorium oxide. Rutherford noticed the compounds of thorium continues, continuously emit a radioactive gas that remains radioactive for several minutes, and gas and called, and called this gas, gas emanation. Mm. Oh, and later, the thorium like, emanation. Now, how do you know it's a gas? It's just an emanation, isn't it? Absolutely, of course. But uh, in 1900, Friedrich Ernst Dorn reported some experiments in which he noticed that radium compounds emanate, emanate a radioactive, radioactive gas he named radium emanation. Mm. In well, 1901, I'm... Rutherford and Harriet Brooks demonstrated the emanations are radioactive. Well, mm. that must have been quite easy to do. Yeah, but credited the Curies for the discovery of the element. Mm. 
In 1903, similar emana emanations were observed from actinium by André Louis de Bien and were called actinium mm. emanation. Several shortened names were soon suggested for the three emanations, uh, blah, 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 blah. And in, in a 19, ni 1918, they had quite a few, and eventually radon, phoron, and actinon in 1920. The name radon is not related to that of the Austrian mathematician Johann Radon. The likeness of the spectra of these three gases with those of argon, krypton and xenon and their observed chemical inertia led Sir William Ramsey, yeah. it's that man again, yeah. on, to I suggest will. that in 1904 the emanations might contain a new element of the noble gas family, yeah. so or a new they, product. Yeah, basically a new product. So how did they isolate it? Anyway, in 1909, Ramsey and Robert Whitlaw Gray mm. isolated radon and determined its melting temperature, temperature at approximate density. density. In 1910, they determined that it was the heaviest known gas. gas. They wrote that... Uh, yeah, blah, you don't, blah, need, to, you you don't, don't need, need to do all that. You, what, you, what we need to do is find out how they isolated it. Right, OK. So, yeah, absolutely, because That's it doesn't actually do. stay here, how they isolated, isolated it. it. No. Maybe it, it's a bit it like just the says, indium, how they made yeah, the indium. You know. Yeah, in 1909, they isolated radon, but they don't say how. Isn't there a diagram oh. of their equipment there? Yeah, so the we've got this, used there's by. A, Yeah, there's a, a diagram here. Apparatus used by Ramsey and Whitlaw Gray to isolate so radon. radon. There you go. Oh, right, okay. M is the capilla capillary tube, uh, approximately. where approximately 0.1 millimetres cube were isolated. Wow. Not so a lot, it's a tiny amount. It? Radon mixed with hydrogen entered the vacu evacuated system through siphon A. Mercury is shown in black. Right, okay. Now, so let's go on. Um, mm. Where do we need to go on? This one, or do we need to go on this one? This one here. This one here. Yeah, come on. Here we go. We've got Sir William Ramsey and the noble, noble gases. gases. Here we go. Mm. Abstract. We don't need the abstract. It's all so abstract. Have, there's really, a picture of, uh, let's just zoom in here. There's Sir William Ramsey there, a picture yeah. of him. He could have made a good Sherlock Holmes. Oh, well, yeah, could have. Absolutely, of course. Where's his uh, Dr. Watson? Go on, Absolutely. So Ramsey's a, career. Don't be, Absolutely, uh, of course. Yeah, we just need nothing. to get on to the... There we go. Uh, let's have go on, have it. Referees, testimony, Williamson. Where do we go? Ramsey's character. Yeah, we don't this want is know. quite an interesting read, actually, because it just well, talks about... you want to know about... Well, a lot Ramsey. of it's rubbish, to be fair, but, you know, atmospheric gases... Okay, and we've got uh, that one. That's uh, that's a picture of Ray. Rayleigh, his bum chum. He looks they look happy, Ramsey. don't they? Absolutely, they, yeah, they look uh, very happy, don't yeah. they? Uh, Ramsay's chemistry. Argon. Um, Argon, there's a bit about Argon. Go on, hurry. And there, and there. Oh, wasn't it here? No. No, oh, it's all about got... Argon, though. Helium, helium. Yeah, there's a bit going. about helium. And we get there. Neon, Krypton and Xenon. Mm -hmm. It must be right at the end then. Radon. Radon. Here, oh, we here we go. go. Isn't this wonderful? Here we go. Here so we go. at McGill University, Rutherford and Soddy. Soddy has shown that heavy elements such as thorium and radium give, gave off a gas, which they called emanation. In minute quantities. Yeah, which appear to be chemically inert. It might be a further noble gas that could fill the gap below Xenon in the periodic table. It's as if they know where they're going to put all these. Yeah, I know, yeah, sure. They attempted to determine its density, which would give the atomic weight, but they could not get a reliable value. Because they had problems in handling small amounts, didn't they? Small quantities, small absolutely, quantities of course. Small quantities yeah. of gas. Only Ramsey had the technique of handling such small amounts of gases, and in 1903, Soddy joined Ramsey. The gas showed no discharge spectrum, but after a time, the spectrum of helium developed. Mm. This was the death knell of the indestructibility of the atom. Dum dum dum. Right, okay, go on. As we saw earlier in Ramsay's song, we don't need to absolutely go. The only way to confirm the emanation that they first called niton and later radon was a noble gas, was to determine its density. And Whitlaw Gray in Ramsay's laboratory built the balance which was sensitive to 10 to the minus 8 G. G. And is shown in figure 19. Two. It was a modification of a design by Steele, one of Ramsey's students, who had then moved to Australia. The blame, blah, blah, blah. So that's a picture of the... Wait there. That's the tape. There's a picture of the diagram. Balance. Uh, here's a bulb. OK, so absolutely. And then it carries on. Uh, the tip of the tube, that goes... That, that just describes how the machine worked, how the device yeah, worked. Yeah. 
1904, Ramsey was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry with a citation in recognition of his services in the discovery of the inert gaseous elements in air. No, for producing. Absolutely. Producing. Yeah, well, sure, of producing. But has anyone not noticed anything yet about the text? It's not telling you how he... It's not telling you how he actually did it. Did it. Yeah. Absolutely. At the same ceremony, Rayleigh was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Figure oh, 20 wow. shows Ramsey's Nobel certificate. Oh. Whoopee do. Hmm. It's a piece of paper with pretty drawings on it and it's stuff. pictures. That's probably worth a lot of money. Probably. But can get just, you into places where you wouldn't otherwise get into. But, but it's just hanging on someone's wall. But it's just hanging on someone's wall. There we go. Absolutely, of course. Uh, hanging on someone's wall. That would make a good song, that title. Oh. That so it still ha hasn't told ha you. Hanging on someone's, someone's wall. wall. Oh, well, yeah. Absolutely. Note one, this article. Blah, note two. Note three. Okay. Okay, there we go. Helium. No, Acknowledgement. Oh, look. Oh, I'm disappointed. Pointed. Oh, well. Oh, look. I, I can't believe that... There's I can't, nothing There's there. nothing there about oh. Ramsey and how he discovered radon. Radon, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got the Ramsey's apparatus for isolating xenon here. For producing yeah, xenon. Of producing xenon. It's also got a little bit more information about xenon. Uh, you know, here. And neon. Neon, yeah. Neon, okay. That's pretty okay. Yeah, because it, the thing is, all his apparatus is, is laid out in a different... In a different um, configuration, configuration to sure. produce a different gas, yeah, absolutely. a different if you, product. Absolutely. If you do different things in the manufacturing process with your stuff that you're working yeah. with, it's going to come out differently, isn't it? Yeah. So, so I was very disappointed yeah. to, to realise that there's bugger all concerning how Ramsey produced Isol isolated, isolated radon. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, there's absolutely nothing there. There's absolutely yeah. nothing there. Well, it's, yeah. And they talk about Whitlaw Gray's balance. I yeah, mean, I know, what's, yeah. what's the point of that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, which, you know, it does make you wonder if they were only measuring like 0 0.01 millimetre cubed sure. of air, does it yeah, actually sure. make you wonder whether it's... H how effective is, is... What they were actually doing, someone might actually look at them and might think, I can't believe you're doing that. Yeah, you're just pissing White, about, about with yeah. uh, just rubbish. It's a bit like Cavendish with his balls. Absolutely, of course. Looking yeah. through his, with his te looking through his telescope, and looking for the. Oh, that's just on the, the presence movement. of helium in Cleveland. But uh, yeah, I mean, I can't for the life of me, you know, if anyone's got any information out there as to exactly how Ramsey uh, produced, manufactured radon, radon. I mean, please let us know because this diagram just doesn't cut the cake. Like, no. Uh, when you look at information um, like this, you know, there's no information here at all, especially when the whole part of the book talks about Sir William Ramsey and the, the noble, noble gases. gases. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. What so, about the uh, radon element? Oh, because it doesn't tell you even in Wikipedia. It doesn't tell you even in Wikipedia, Wikipedia. how radon was actually oh, yeah, uh, was, was 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 actually isolated, isolated. Yeah. Apart from this little diagram that could have come out of someone's scrapbook. Yeah. So one has to ask oneself: Does it actually exist? Does it actually exist? It could be a pseudo element, substance, pseudo substance. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Let's know your views. You know, at the end of the day. But there you go. as far as I'm concerned, I can't. Un I can't accept this information to be proof that radon is a real. Yeah. Gas, um, yeah, no, yeah. noble gas. I, sorry, yeah. I can't do that. In our understanding, what because they found, I'm sure they found radon in in mines when they were uranium mines. Sure. And what could have happened was that I mean, this is only my thoughts. Thoughts on it. What could have happened was that through all the blasting and all the drilling, all that human activity, because uranium may have a certain quality mm. of re releasing radiation. If yeah. you, I don't know, wh if where you, an explosion is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, occur, occurs, occurs yeah, sure. nearby. The, the 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 radon is released, the gas is released, but it's only part because of the, the 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 human activity. Yeah, sure. If you took that human activity away, it, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. exist. 
this is what we're saying all all throughout our videos we're, we're looking at man's fabricated world we're looking at how man um, constructs his understanding of the natural world through only only through the way he can interact with the world mm. the natural world. oh did we not want to look at cleavite well I've, we've got the page up i can't remember why we wanted to look up cleavite someone 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 did use some acids on cleavite didn't they yeah and they, they well according to this one they would just just have produced helium uh they would have just produced helium oh right on okay. on cleavite Maybe yeah, when a mixture of the mineral with potassium bisulfate was heated in a combustion tube, a gas was given off, which was passed over red hot copper and collected over a concentrated potash solution. Mm. Sure. By comparing the spectrum of the gas with that of the tube of argon, it was found that it contained no argon lines. The following of a wavelength, blah, 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 of a new gas. And I think it was all to do with um, uh, helium, I think. But I can't, I can't remember why we got this. In Nature, for May the 2nd, two papers communicated to the Royal Society on April 25th, 25th by Professors Ramsey and Lockyer. Yeah. So we've got Ramsey oh, well, yeah. next article page in full. The first describes the circumstances which led to the discovery of the new gas and gives the qualitative no, comparison of the spectra off. in argon and helium tubes. No, we're going off on a tangent now. We're going off on one. Yeah, Absolutely, of course. Uraninite. Click off. Uraninite. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Uraninite. Come on. Yeah, there's nothing there about... Uh, yeah, there's yeah. nothing there. We, sorry, we, we do apologize. Go off on a tangent there. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Radon, you know. Well, we need to look at more information. We, look at, we need to look at more information. But it appears, yes. from the information we've looked at, that radon appears to be a pseudo-element, element. Yep. a pseudo-product. Basically, yeah. I mean, it could well be have been produced but nobody can show you radon no nobody uh, can show you it you know so how yeah. do we know it actually exists it is, yeah. a lot of people talk about stuff <clears throat> that basically doesn't exist is fictitious yeah. it could be a fictitious element, element yeah a pseudo element well even if you watch the periodic videos periodic videos periodic they're, ra they're one on radon they don't show you any Absolutely. So how do we know that it's... They just tell you about it. Well, that's... You know, I yeah. mean, I, you know, if somebody tells me they've got a five in their pocket with the way human beings are and the amount yeah. of mistrust in, in man's world, I'm certainly not going to accept what they're telling me to be true. I want to see, see that five. Yeah. Absolutely. Then I know they've got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there we go. There we go. Thanks ever so much. And always remember, till next time, if something doesn't make sense, like... People telling you they're sane when they're insane. Mad. When they're insane, so basically. Absolutely. Or if you thought, or if you think oxygen is a constituent of the air. Yeah. If no you way. think oxygen is a constituent of water. If you think nitrogen is a constituent of the air. If you think fish breathe oxygen. oxygen. If you think we breathe oxygen and breathe out and exhale carbon dioxide. If you think plants absorb oxygen and release. Oh, no, sorry, absorb, absorb carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and release oxygen, oxygen. Mm. as a byproduct of the process of photosynthesis in their natural environment. Mm. If you think rockets go into space. If you think the Earth's a spinning ball. If you think water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. Absolutely. If you think nobody, c everyone is fair. Oh, well, yeah. If you think white light is made up of RGB. If you think chlorine is congruent. If you think light is electromagnetic. If you think metals don't contain carbon. If you think radioactive carbon-14 exists naturally in the atmosphere. If you think the ionosphere bounces off radio waves. If you think the sun gives off or emits electromagnetic radiation. radiation. Oh, right, yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. Do you like that one? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. God, this list is getting so absolutely. long. It's it's all abs it's absolute rubbish. It's all man made. It's all man made, man -made. isn't it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thanks ever so much. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Ta da. The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.